life will become difficult towards the end. Challenges will come. Disasters will come. Catastrophes will come. The earth will be covered in injustice and in wars and in battles. And you see that today. Look at the Arab Spring. Look at Syria. Look at Africa. Look at what's happening there in Russia. Mankind is becoming more and more um, unstable and unhappy and miserable and in difficulty and in turmoil. And when the earth is covered with injustice as it is going towards that direction, the Prophet ﷺ gives us the glad tidings of a righteous ruler who will come. Now about this righteous ruler, the Prophet ﷺ says he will fill the earth up with justice and peace as it was filled with oppression and wrong. Good days will come after these difficulties. And with regards to this ruler, a thousand and fifty ahadith have been narrated, of which four are sahih. Of which four are sahih. And I want to start a little bit before this, so listen to me, insha'Allah ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ at his time, one day he came at Dhuhr to the masjid and started to speak about the signs of the end. That this is what will happen and this is what will... And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke from Dhuhr until Asr. And then they gave the adhan for Asr, they stood up, they prayed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood back up and started to speak again from Asr until Maghrib. And in that way he continued and the Ashab say, he mentioned and went through every sign and we remembered what we could remember and forgot what we forgot. So amidst those signs that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he mentions this hadith. And I want you to listen to it carefully. And the Prophet ﷺ says, تكون النبوة فيكم ما شاء الله أن تكون ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها Prophethood will stay amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izzah wishes for it to remain then Allah Rabbul Izzah will lift up Prophethood and Prophethood would be no more and we knew our witnesses that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, prophethood was lifted and prophethood is no more. So Ya Rasul, what will happen after prophethood? So he said, ثُمَّ تَكُونُ خِلَافَةً رَاشِدًا فَتَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَن تَكُونُ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهَا اللَّهُ إِذَا شَاءَ أَن يَرْفَعَهَا Then will come the age of the rightly guided khulafa the rightly guided Khalifas of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They will reign amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izzah wishes for them to reign. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah will lift up the reign of the rightly guided. Ya Rasul, what will come after them? ثُمَّ تَكُونُ مُلْكًا عَادًّا فَتَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَن تَكُونُ ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهَا اللَّهُ إِذَا شَاءَ أَن يَرْفَعَهَا Then will come an age where rulership and leadership is passed within tribes as in it will become tribal or it will become legacy and um, lineage based this this king the son of this king one will hand ball it to the one after them فَتَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَن تَكُونُ Then this age will stay amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izzah wishes for it to stay. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah will lift this age up from amidst you. ثُمَّ تَكُونُ مُلْكًا جَبْرِيًّا Then will come a tyrannical rule. 
an oppressive rule and it will last amidst you so long as Allah Rabbul Izza wishes it to last. Then Allah Rabbul Izza will lift up this age when He Azza wa Jal wishes to remove that age. Then what will come after this age of tyranny and oppression? Listen, O Muslims, and glad tidings to you. Then will come the age of the rightly guided Khalif who will lead in accordance to the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This rightly guided Khalif is the one about whom 1050 narrations have come of which four are Sahih. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and with regards to him, he is famous amidst us as the Mahdi. And this is part of the beliefs of the Ahl Sunnah that a person will come who will be from the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Rasul says, Al Mahdi min itrati min waladi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my lineage, as in from my progeny, from the children of Fatima. And then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, His name will be my name. So his name will be Muhammad. And his father's name will be my father's name. So he will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And as the earth was filled with wrong and oppression, he will fill it with justice and peace. And this, this righteous ruler, Ali radiallahu anhu says, Al Mahdi minna ahl al bayt. The Mahdi is from us, from the family of the Prophet. يُصْلِحُهُ اللَّهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ Allah Rabbul Al-Izza will prepare him for the office of leadership in one night. So the Mahdi doesn't know he is the Mahdi. And the Mahdi doesn't have the competencies of the Mahdi. Until one night. In one night Allah will transform him. The Ahadith mention that a king will die in the Jazeera in the Arab Peninsula. And the sons or three sons of a king will fight and quarrel over leadership. And to avoid this quarrel, this man, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, will leave Medina in secret and go to Mecca. Because he doesn't want to be involved in the conflict nor does he want people to turn towards him. So when he goes to Mecca, his aim is to avoid getting tangled up in this leadership struggle. Yet people follow him from Medina into Mecca. And they find him and they take him out. And they bring him to the Kaaba. And there between the, the Rukn, as in Hajar al-Aswad, and Maqam Ibrahim, they will make bay'ah to him when he doesn't want it. You with me? That didn't sound very convincing. So they will make bay'ah to him. And as soon as they have pledged allegiance, two things will happen. Number one, an army will march out from Syria to attack this progeny of the Rasul. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen carefully, is in the house of Aisha Radiallahu Anha. And he is asleep. And in his sleep, he starts to move. He looks uncomfortable. He's displaying what he's never displayed before. Discomfort and sleep to the extent that he's moving. Then he got up. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have seen you do what you normally do not do. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Strange is the situation. An army will come from, the, from Syria, intending the house of Allah, from my ummah, seeking a man from my progeny to attack him. And in another hadith, وَاللَّفْظُ لِلْبُخَارِي يَغْزُوا جَيْشٌ الْكَعْبَةِ 
فإذا جاءوا ببيضاء من الأرض يخصف بأولهم وآخرهم and an army will come campaigning towards the Kaaba until it reached the Bayda. And Bayda is an expanse of land between Mecca and Medina, a flat desert land. When it reaches there, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَخْصَفُوا بِأَوَّلِهِمْ وَآخَرِهِمْ The earth will suck them in their first and their last. And in another قول, one person or a couple of people will be left just to tell the tale. So this is one of the signs that this one is the one the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intended. First that his name will be my name. And his na- the name of his father will be my father's name. Second, an army will come to attack him. And he will be unarmed. And the army will be destroyed by Allah alone. So when this happens, realize that this is the one. And the people that realize it, initially or the first batch that go towards him is from our lands, from Khurasan. The black flags will rise from the areas of Afghanistan. And the flags will come towards him. And they will traverse through the land until they come in help of the Mahdi. And his time is a difficult era. The Rasul says it in an eloquence befitting the majesty of the Rasul. Listen carefully Muslims. تَخْزُونَ جَزِيرَةَ الْعَرَبِ فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ You will campaign in the Arab Peninsula and Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الْفَارْسِ Then there will be a campaign against the Persians. فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ And Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الرُّومِ Then there will be a campaign against Rome and Allah will open it. ثم تغزون الدجال فيفتحه الله. Then the Dajjal will come and Allah will open it as in will let you conquer it. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. And the hadith says he will stay with you for seven years. And maybe eight. And if it really extends nine years. And at the last campaign, the Muslims will come and the other side, its opposition will come to face it. And the opposition is so huge. 80 banners, 80 different flags, under each flag, 12,000 men. And when the two sides meet and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Because running away reduces and destroys the morale of everyone standing. So then the campaign starts and the battle is hot in its intense. And a third of the Muslims will die. And a third will be victorious. Just a third will be victorious. So you would think after such a calamity, after such a colossal engagement, or what is referred to in the books that preceded us as Armageddon, you would have expected issues to become more relaxed. Yet, as they have just become victorious and are collecting the things of the battlefield, a voice will come out to them that, O Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your lands. And the first of the Alamatul Kubra, the first of the major signs, is the advent of the Dajjal or the Antichrist. 